Hello and welcome. In this math tutorial, our task is to find all the real values of x that satisfy this rational equation. Of course, you know that for this equation to be defined, then two conditions must be met. The first one is that 4x minus 7 must not be equal to 0 because we cannot divide by 0. So from here, we have that 4x must not be equal to 7 and x must not be equal to 7 over 4. Now, the second condition is that the square root of x minus 1 must be greater than 0. Now, from here, we have that x minus 1 must be greater than 0 and x must be greater than 1. So, already we have that x must not be equal to 7 over 4 and x must be greater than 1. Now, to solve the equation proper, let us begin with a substitution. Let us call the square root of x minus 1 u. Of course, you know that u must be greater than 0. When we square both sides of this equation, you know that this square is going to take care of this square root. And from here, we have that u squared is equal to x minus 1. Now, we are not going to try to rewrite the entire equation in terms of u. What we are going to do is that we will simply replace this quantity with u. You are going to see why as we go on with the solution. Now, rewriting this equation, we have 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 divided by 4x minus 7 times u is equal to 1. Of course, you know that the next thing we are going to do is to get rid of this fraction on the left-hand side of the equation. How are we going to do that? We are going to cross-multiply. So, when we cross-multiply, we have that this times 1, that is 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equal to this times 1, that is u times 4x minus 7. Now, when we open these brackets, we have that 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equal to 4xu minus 7u. Now, let us move these two terms over to the left-hand side. When we do that, we have 2x squared minus 4x u minus 5x plus 4 plus 7u is equal to 0. And now the next thing we are going to do is that we will complete the square. We are going to add and subtract 2u squared to the left side of this equation. Of course, you know that when we add and subtract the same quantity to one side of an equation, we haven't changed the equation. So when we do that, this equation becomes 2x squared minus 4xu. Now we add plus 2u squared. Then we have minus 5x plus 4 plus 7u, and we subtract minus 2u squared is equal to 0. Now, let us factorize these three. Of course, you can see a common factor, which is 2. We have 2 into 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. Minus 4xu divided by 2 is minus 2xu. And 2u squared divided by 2 is u squared. Now here we have minus 5x plus 4 plus 7u minus 2u squared. But now remember that u squared is equal to x minus 1. So we have minus 2 into x minus 1 and this is equal to 0. Now look at this. Of course you can see that this is a perfect square. So here we have 2 
into x minus u squared. Notice that if we expand this bracket, this is exactly what we are going to get. Because when we expand, we have x squared. 2 times x times minus u. That is minus 2xu. And we have minus u squared, which is equal to plus u squared. Then we have minus 5x plus 4 plus 7u minus 2 times this is 2x and minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2 and this is equal to 0. And from here we have 2x minus u squared minus. Now we have minus 5x and we have minus 2x. Of course, minus 5x minus 2x is equal to minus 7x. So this is minus 7x. Here we have 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. But before then, let us add plus 7u and then plus 6. And this is equal to 0. Once more, when you look at these two, you're going to see a common factor, which is 7. So we have 2x minus u squared then we have minus 7 into minus 7x divided by minus 7 is going to be x and 7u divided by minus 7 is going to be minus u then we have plus 6 and this is equal to 0 now look at this here we have x minus u and here we have x minus u so let x minus u be equal to the letter d now, this equation becomes 2d squared minus 7d plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, we can solve this quadratic equation by factorization. But since the coefficient of d squared is not 1, let us use the table method. Now, what are the factors of 2d squared? We have d and 2d. What are the factors of plus 6? We have two and three. But since this is negative, let this be minus two and let this be minus three. Because of course, you know that minus two times minus three is still going to give us plus six. Now D times minus three is going to give us minus three D. And 2d times minus 2 is going to give us minus 4d. And of course, minus 4d minus 3d is going to give us minus 7d. So that means that we can factorize the left-hand side of this quadratic equation as d minus 2 multiplied by 2d minus 3. And of course, this is equal to 0. And from this equation, we have that either d minus 2 is equal to 0 or 2d minus 3 is equal to 0. From here, when we add 2 to both sides of this equation, we have that d is equal to 2. When we add 3 to both sides of this equation, we have that 2d is equal to 3. And when we divide both sides of this equation by 2, we have that d is equal to 3 over 2. So that means that x minus u is equal to 2 or x minus u is equal to 3 over 2. Now before we continue, let us rearrange these two equations and make u the subject of the equations. When we do that, in this case we have x minus 2 is equal to u and in this case we have x minus 3 over 2 is equal to u. And of course, now that we have an expression for u in terms of x, to find x, we simply go back to this. So we have that u squared, in this case, x minus 2 squared is equal to x minus 1. So x minus 2 squared is equal to x minus 1. x squared is that. 2 times x times minus 2 is minus 4x and minus 2 squared is equal to plus 4. This is equal to x minus 1. Now let us rearrange this equation. We have x squared minus 
4x minus x is equal to minus 1 minus 4. This is x squared minus 4x minus x is minus 5x is equal to minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5. Now let us complete the squares. Of course, you know that we are going to add the square of half the coefficient of x to both sides of this equation. The coefficient of x is minus 5. Half of it is minus 5 over 2. So we are going to add minus 5 over 2 squared to both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. When we do that, we have x squared minus 5x plus minus 5 over 2 squared is equal to minus 5 plus minus 5 over 2 squared. Of course, you know that the left-hand side of this equation is now a perfect square. So we take 1x and we take 1 minus 5 over 2 and we square. Notice that if we expand this bracket, this is exactly what we are going to get. And of course, this is equal to minus 5 plus Minus 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4. We have that x minus 5 over 2 squared is equal to 4 times minus 5 is minus 20. Minus 20 plus 25 is 5 over 4. Now, the next thing is to take square root of both sides of this equation. When we do that, we have that x minus 5 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 4, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. And of course, when we add 5 over 2 to both sides of this equation, we have that x is equal to 5 over 2 plus root 5 over 2 or 5 over 2 minus root 5 over 2. Now we have two values of x. Let us look at the two values. Of course, we know that u must be positive, right? But now come back to this equation. We have that x minus 2 is equal to u. Now, if u must be positive, then that imposes the condition on x that x must be greater than 2. When you look at these two values of x that we calculated, this is less than 2. This is the only value of x that is greater than 2. So this value of x is not acceptable as a solution to this rational equation. Now, in the second case, we have that x minus 3 over 2 is equal to u. So that simply means that x minus 3 over 2 squared is equal to x minus 1. So we have that x minus 3 over 2 squared is equal to x minus 1. Opening this bracket, we have x squared. 2 times x times minus 3 over 2 is minus 3x. Minus 3 over 2 squared is plus 9 over 4. This is equal to x minus 1. Once more, when we rearrange this, we have x squared minus 3x minus x is equal to minus 1 minus 9 over 4. Now, 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. Minus 4 minus 9 is minus 13. So this is minus 13 over 4. Minus 3x minus x is minus 4x. So we have x squared minus 4x is equal to minus 13 over 4. And once more, we complete the square. We add the square of half the coefficient of x to both sides of this equation. What is the coefficient of x? It is minus 4. Half of minus 4 is minus 2. And the square of that is minus 2 squared. So we have x squared minus 4x plus minus 2 squared is equal to 
minus 13 over 4 plus minus 2 squared. This is a perfect square. So we have x minus 2 squared is equal to minus 13 over 4 plus minus 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 13 is 3. So this is equal to 3 over 4. Now we take square root of both sides of this equation. When we do that, we have that x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 4. Of course, this is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. And of course, when we add 2 to both sides of this equation, we have that x is equal to 2 plus root 3 over 2 or 2 minus root 3 over 2. And of course, once more, you know that x must be greater than 2 for you to be positive. So that simply means that this value of x is not acceptable. So the only two values of x that satisfy this rational equation are x equal to 2 plus root 3 over 2 and x equal to 5 over 2 plus root 5 over 2. This is a long video already, so I leave the check to you. You check the two values of x and let me know in the comment section whether they satisfy the rational equation. And with that, we come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoy such content, please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a thumbs up to support the channel. Thanks for watching and you can see more videos here.